For many people in the world, they get their water supplied to them through a central supply system that feeds to their pipes in their house or apartment. However, for the rest of the world not hooked up to centralized water, they get their water through private or public wells. Wells are some of the most essential components to developing a sustainable society. They provide a clean and reliable supply of water for drinking, bathing, and irrigation, even in locations where water on the surface is scarce. Wells are essentially just holes in the ground filled with water, but they have more complexities than meets the eye. Let's take a closer look at how wells work. Wells, historically, have been dug by hand. They essentially are just holes in the ground whose depth goes below the water table. The water table is the level of groundwater below the surface. Nearly everywhere on Earth has a water table below the surface, but in some places it's a few feet, and in others it's a few hundred or even thousands of feet. The water table isn't just an underground open lake, though. It's dirt and rock like everywhere else, except the groundwater fills the space in between the particles. In days of old, workers would just dig a hole until the hole started filling up with water. As long as the hole depth stayed below the water table depth, the hole would continuously fill with water. Many wells in remote places are still dug by hand, but now most are dug by drilling machines that can create much more uniform and far deeper wells. All of that said, let's dive into the few different types of wells in a little bit more detail. First, there's the dug wells, like what we mentioned before, and these are typically dug with shovels or simple hand tools. They'll only be possible in places with high water tables and soft ground. Once a digger reaches the water table, the hole is typically lined with stone to stabilize it. These wells typically can't be much deeper than the water table itself, as you can't dig past the water table with a shovel, the hole will just keep filling in. This is the same phenomenon you've likely experienced digging a hole in the sand at the beach. The next type of wells are driven wells. These are wells made from small diameter pipes which are driven into soft ground. These pipes typically have screens at their bottom to filter out sand and particulate matter, and can be effective, quick, and simple ways to make a well. However, they do have some drawbacks. They can really only reach shallow water, and contamination from the surface can easily occur. The last type of wells are drilled wells, which are likely the most common type of wells today, but they're also the most complicated and expensive to make. They are drilled using massive rigs which can go through all types of earth. These wells are typically very deep, upwards of 1,000 feet, and are used to reach very deep water reserves. Now that we've gone through the different types of wells, let's learn a little bit more about how they actually function. Wells fill up based on the groundwater level, like we mentioned before. Once you take water from the well, water from the surrounding groundwater slowly starts to fill the well up again. The rate of this refilling has to do with how much groundwater surrounds the well and the size of the particles in the ground, among a few other factors. If the particle space is large, the water will fill faster. If the well is fine clay, then the well will take a while to refill. For most wells, a pump is placed into the well to suck out the water. When water is pumped out and the surrounding water tries to refill the well, something called, and what is my favorite term in engineering, the cone of depression forms. The cone of depression is not what you wear when you're feeling a little bit sad. It's actually a conical depression in the water table that can extend far beyond the well itself. In fact, if a high flow rate well is installed too close to another well, the first well's cone of depression can draw the surrounding water table down so far that the neighboring well no longer works. There are formulas engineers use to calculate and model cones of depression when designing wells, which is crucial to make sure your well doesn't adversely affect anything else in the surrounding region. It's also crucial to make sure that your well doesn't overpump the water table. If you suck too much water from the ground, eventually the ground can compact and the water table will drop permanently. This settling can cause the ground elevation at the surface to go down, in some cases many hundreds of feet over years of well pumping. This has occurred in regions of the US like in California and towards the west coast. 
While there are a plethora of public wells that supply water for entire cities, let's focus on private wells to understand a bit more about what goes into them. Many people across the world supply their own water through private wells. These wells will be drilled near their dwelling and will have a screen at the bottom to filter out grit, a submersible pump placed at the bottom of the well, along with electrical wiring to power the pump. There will typically be a tank above ground that pressurizes the water, giving your house pressurized water to use in sinks, faucets, toilets, and showers. It's really as simple as that. The main components of wells are the well casing, which is a solid tube structure of the well, the well cap, which is a cover of the well placed at the surface to keep animals or debris from falling in and contaminating the well. There's well screens, which are placed at the bottom of the well to keep sediment out and keep the well from filling up with dirt. Then there are pumps. Jet pumps are the most common pumps for private wells mounted above ground, which use suction to draw the water up. However, if a well is deeper than about 25 to 45 feet, a submersible pump will be needed. At these depths, the pressure required to pump water up this height is far too much for most above ground pumps. Submersible pumps are used for deep wells and are placed at the bottom of the well. And that just about covers it. Wells are crucial to civilization, but require a number of technical factors to be considered when creating and designing them. This video is primarily focused on the basics of wells, but there are some more technical concepts that we skipped over. Things like aquifers, waterhead, calculating flow rates, water volume, and other uses for wells beyond purely water collection, to name a few. Hopefully though, this was enough to give you a good introduction to the science and engineering of water wells.